Welcome back to another episode of Days of Yore and Law. To greatly help this channel grow, please do not forget to like and subscribe, and please enjoy the video. On the 4th of August 1553, the Privy Council of Lady Jane Grey, many who had also been part of the Privy Council of King Edward VI before her, made its formal submission to Mary Tudor and recognised her as Queen of England. Lady Jane Grey, who was housed in the Tower of London, awaiting her coronation as is tradition, went from Queen to prisoner nigh on instantaneously. Although pressured by the Spanish ambassador Renard, under the orders of his master Charles the Holy Roman Emperor, to punish all traitors, Mary wasn't persuaded she would deal with the matter in her own way. Renard believed that there were those who threatened her security as Queen. Jane of Suffolk, as we know her today, Lady Jane Grey, her father the Duke of Suffolk, the Duke of Northumberland, and the Duke of Northumberland's son and Jane's spouse, Guilford Dudley, and that they should be put to death. Now many of you would assume that Mary punished the traitors forthwith, but history is not that simple. Whilst the Queen considered putting the men to death, she blatantly refused to consider such for Jane. She seemed reluctant to execute her cousin. Going so far as to state that Jane was an innocent tool to ruthless men. But why would a Queen, who would go on to be called Bloody Mary, be so reluctant to kill her rival? Let us take a look into why. Firstly, we can take into account Mary's sense of justice. I know, for someone who has such an infamous moniker, it sounds a little strange, but the Queen was particularly anxious on ensuring justice to be dealt out fairly in her name as she began her reign. Going so far as summoning and instructing her judges to sit not as advocates for me, but as indifferent judges between me and my people. If Mary strongly believed that Jane was just a pawn, then that strong sense of justice would have compelled her to treat the situation fairly. But how did Mary reach this idea? We do know that Jane and Mary would have interacted with one another on various occasions during the court of King Edward VI, and is entirely possible for similar interactions during the final years of King Henry VIII's court. So it is likely Mary had a good gauge on Jane's personality. In addition, on the 5th of August, along with the talks on how to deal with the traitors, Mary received a lengthy letter from Jane herself. Inside this letter, Jane gave Mary a full and honest account on her nine days reign. She made no concessions and few excuses for herself. Taking ownership of what happened, the information in the letter clearly backed up the Queen's opinions, that Jane had no choice in the matter of the events that took place. Even though Jane admitted she had done wrong by accepting the crown and was ashamed to ask for a pardon for such a crime, Mary believed her to be just a pawn and was impressed by such an honest letter. Mary's conscience not permitting Jane to be put to death, even though she had technically committed treason, was very strong. Two of her closest advisers in her reign, the Spanish ambassador Renard and the bishop Gardner, repeatedly made their opinions known that any form of mercy was unwise. Renard, even going so far as to anger the queen, with his statement that he would not rest easy until she agreed to obliterate the whole house of Suffolk. Why this would anger Mary so much leads us to another reason for Mary's reluctance in killing Jane. Jane's mother, the Duchess of Suffolk. Francis Grey, nee Brandon. Francis was the daughter of Charles Brandon, the Duke of Suffolk, and his third wife, Mary Tudor, Queen of France. Francis and Mary were cousins, and with the rocky relationship between her sister Elizabeth, Francis was the closest family relationship Mary had. 
The Queen regarded Francis highly, even going so far as to release her husband, the Duke of Suffolk, from his imprisonment in the Tower, which he took residence in after Mary Tudor took office from Lady Jane Grey. Though she didn't release her daughter Jane, it is up to debate whether some of Mary's reluctance was fear of greatly harming her relationship with her closest friend and cousin. What followed on from the 5th of August was as follows. As a matter of form, Jane would be tried and condemned. Jane was informed of her trial on the 28th of October, along with the fact that a pardon would soon follow after the trial. Something she took cheerfully. On the 14th of November, she was taken to her trial where she pleaded guilty to high treason and was condemned to be burned at the stake or beheaded at the Queen's leisure. Queen Mary herself assured Renard that she would be watchful in case Lady Jane became the focus of any further conspiracies and Mary would ensure that the realm was quiet before she set Jane free from the tower. Mary even considered going so far as to protect Jane from future manipulations by sending her to a convent or nunnery. As a prisoner within the tower, even one condemned, Jane was kept comfortably with her books, regular walks on the wall of the tower, she was comfortably lodged with Master Patridge, the gentleman jailer and regularly sat at the place of honour for her meals with him and his wife. So what changed? At some point Mary's mercy and her reluctance to kill her cousin ran out. As history will tell us Jane was executed under the orders of Queen Mary Tudor when she was just 17 years old. So what caused the decision. Was it Jane's anti-Catholic diatribes she so enjoyed to viciously write? Was it her defying the rules of her confinement and attempting an escape? Or was it a very similar situation to what got her here in the first place? The actions of others defining Jane as a symbol and a pawn to the power play of the nobles one that had deadly consequences for the young noble. Say, for example, a rebellion. Thank you for watching and to support our channel, please do not forget to subscribe.